Hey friends, this is Marilyn from TarotClarity.com and today is November 6, 2024. Kind of a day of disbelief in this household. <laughs> um, but that's what we've got to work with. So at any rate, I figured this would be a really good time since many of you, I know many of you uh, watched the videos that I did yesterday, um, not looking for the outcome of the, the results of the election because at that time we were being told that it would take weeks before we could possibly know, you know, the outcome. But they seemed to wrap it up real tightly by 11 o'clock last night, which is interesting, <laughs> you know. But it's the way it should be. It, it, you know, you should be able to have you know, an idea of who won an election immediately, you know, and if something's too close or whatever, you try, you know, to count and see if everything's cool, you know, but, um, it's, it, it, it's the way it should be, right? It should be quick. But at any rate, unfortunately, um, many of us are concerned about the outcome. And, uh, I did, I did a few readings yesterday on video, which um, just the video right before here, before this one, on not the outcome of the evening, but how it would appear to us, uh, appear to me, you know, or appear to us, I guess, before bed, before we retired for the evening, you know, but, and I was looking at it from my perspective because I was the one who was doing the cards and it was relevant to me going you know, staying up till like nine or 10 o'clock and then deciding to fall asleep, you know, because I figured hopefully by then we'll have a really good understanding. And it was just like 2016, man. By nine or 10 o'clock, I could read the writing on the wall. So anyway, I do want to revisit the cards that I pulled yesterday um, because they make sense. But, you know, it's always good, I think, it's one of the ways I learn, and maybe this is an unpopular top point, um, but it's something I've always done. And uh, there's certain, uh, you know, readings that stick with me, you know? You know, I, read, I do so many readings, I can't remember every single one, but every now and then there's something that, you know, there's a, there's a reading that I take pause for. I think I need to pay attention to this, you know? And such was the case, December 31st, 2023, the last day of last year, I did a, I did a reading for 2024. Now, it was so radical, <laughs> you know, at the time that I chose to keep it private, or uh, not private, I chose, I made it private. I initially made it private because it, I kind of felt like it was explosive. Now, it still remains unlisted. I've linked it many, many, many times in other videos that I've posted, and maybe I'll link it down below this one as well. But I, if I change the date, if I release it now, no one's going to know that it was done on December 31st, 2023, because it will timestamp the date that I let it release. You know, So I don't want to do that. I want to retain that it was December 31st, 2023, right? So I have to keep it like private or unlisted to, to preserve that date. But when I read those cards, you know, the question was, tell me something or tell us something that um, we need to know for 2024. And there was one row that I wouldn't even address because I thought it was, what I saw was, and I didn't pull these cards now, but if you, you know, if you go back and you watch the video, you'll, you'll find it. Um, where I saw a woman rising to power, a woman being given power. Now, of course, this was before, you know, uh, uh, Miss Harris um, was offered as the Democratic forerunner. And this was like not something that anybody, I don't think, was even brewing or thinking of at that time, but that's what I saw. One row indicated that, for, and for me to see that, right, that a woman was rising to power, my first thought was, and I interpreted one of the rows as being, that means the current president will probably die, 
That's kind of what I thought, you know? So I didn't want to speak those words. I didn't want to give those words power. So I just said, I'm not going to speak on this row, but, and I didn't want to say specifically what was going to happen or who the person might be, but I was just indicating that um, this might be the year of the woman or a, a year a woman is put before us, you know, for, for a significant reason. And in my heart, I understood that the read, reading meant that a woman would be running on the ticket and somehow Biden would be removed from the ticket. So I guess I never forgot that. It stuck with me. I remembered that reading. And um, I don't know, remember when it was, but sometime in like June or July, it started coming, it, it started unfolding, right? It was when they decided, the Democratic Party decided that they were going to put Kamala on the ticket. Mr. Mr. Biden caught COVID, you know, and uh, I guess decisions were made. And I don't know how much, you know, he participated in it, although I hope and trust that he did, you know, but he was made to understand or made to feel that it was time for him to step down. So, but the, those of us who supported Biden, I think most of us were cool with Miss, Miss Harris, you know? I mean, you know, women always have to try harder than men, right? I mean, and, and p women of color have to try even harder, right? So there's no question she's a qualified woman. There's no question. And he's like a 34-time felon who's probably running for president because he intends to pardon himself if he wins. So I can't get past that level of corruption. I, I just, I can't wrap my head around it. I can't understand how the majority of the people in my country could have chosen him. Okay, so I went off on another tangent because I'm prone to do that. <laughs> So I decided to lay these cards out and to take a look at them for a second time. The first, the first uh, set of cards, I asked what we or I needed to know by the end of the night. I didn't expect to see a winner, but just what, what would the feeling be, the feeling of optimism. And it started out really optimistic with feeling good in the heart and the emotions were pretty good and stable. And that's how I started feeling, you know, from the, from the initial. But then in between, the next card was the devil. And if you recall, another spread I did on the topic a week ago, when I think on the Halloween, it might have been on the Halloween video. I think these two cards showed up in a different deck, which is kind of strange. But at any rate, You know, I see an upset, right? I see perhaps chaos affecting order. And then for the three of, now this is where, this is where if I wasn't seeing what I hoped to see, you know, we all are guilty of that sometimes. And I try to keep myself in check, but I'm a human being. But I saw the three batons as a restoration of social order because I see you know, not a restoration or growth in the, in the direction of social order. Because I see the suit of batons as social. It could be, you know, work. It could be a hobby. It could be just groups of friends. It could just be something that you're part of. It could be a book club, you know. And I see three and my, you know, I was hoping that this meant that, you know, there'd be a, sh you know, there'd be a shake up or there'd be some kind of disruption, but that it would be restored, Right. Um, but I, you know, but that, that's what I was hoping. And so, you know, if there's a chance for a best possible outcome, I'm going to focus on the best possible outcome because that's what I want to, that's how I want to affect change. But then the quint card ended up being the emperor, which I immediately had a heart. I had a sick sense, you know, sick gut, you know, feeling in my gut because I saw this and I saw this. And I felt like that's not going to be a benevolent leader, you know. And I thought by the end of the evening, 
there would be an upset or an upstaging brought on by this guy. But I was still optimistic and hopeful. You know, I was thinking maybe it would just be, you know, he'd rear his head to start trouble or something. I didn't, you know, I, I didn't expect to see that it meant that he, you know, this is how I would identify him taking power. And three batons, rather than, you know, seeing a social growth, you know, three is an unstable number, right? It's an unstable number. It's a fiery, passionate suit. And, you know, in the combination of, of this and this, I should have seen this as stirring trouble. In retrospect, it's what I missed. You know, something stirring trouble and then... So the cards were very interesting, but, you know, I, I didn't receive the message properly. I, I was close. I was just seeing it as how the evening ended, not how the election ended. But, you know, as it turned out, by the time I went to bed, I did know. Uh, I did know that that guy was the winner. Okay, and the second time, because it had been the anniversary of my mother's death, and she died in 2016 when this was happening to us for the first time, <laughs> And so I asked my, you know, if the essence of my mother was at all available or if the universe could uh, just give me a message that would have been consistent with what my mother would like me to know regarding that evening. Because uh, as I mentioned in my other video, you know, I was there when she was dying and this was what was happening and we had a lot of long talks about this, you know. So I, you know, I when I go through this evening last night, um, my mother was with me 100% because I was just taken back to sitting in her bedroom and just, you know, any rate. So I get this. This is what I get. So when I pulled these two cards, uh, the page and the queen of the same suit of wands, you know, I think I said right away family, you know, a message for family, you know, something like that. And then when I saw the horse, it was kind of like a flush, or straight rather, right? A straight flush. <laughs> and um, so then I saw it as like my mother's message, because my mother was very political. If she, if she could get in a political statement, she would, she would, <laughs> you know? So I interpreted it as, you know, family. But then when I saw this, I started to think of young people assisting or helping this woman, you know, get in her position. But as it turns out, the young people did not come out for her. And if they did, I don't think they voted for her. So it, this seems like something my mother would have said. It's like, it depends on the young people, you know, and even in that, after that video, excuse me, during that video, I commented, if you're a young person, please go out and vote, you know, because the young people could have made a difference for her, but they, I, I guess they didn't. They did not that I'm blaming young people. I'm blaming collectively all of us. It's nobody's fault. But I do think my mom might have been, you know, she could have been suggesting family, like hold your family close. You know, that could definitely have been an aspect of what her message was. But it could also have been a political message, like the young people, like this, the wind depends on the young people. And then the Quint card was the fool card and because I read it as I read the deck, you know, I read the card according to the deck it, you know, it's from. And um, I, I kind of saw this as the court jester, you know, disrupting. I mean, you see the horse is coming to a, a sudden stop. I mean, those are clues that I should have noticed yesterday, but I didn't. So it's interesting. And then the last reading was, I asked if there was just a personal message that my mother would have for me, just a personal message. It had nothing to do with politics. And I saw these two cards, two threes, as being growth, you know, you know continue to learn, continue to experience life, enjoy life. You know, I saw this sun card as like continue to enjoy your life. Um, but then I, when I pulled this card, I thought it never left me, you know, and I started to think of my health. And um, I want to share this because, you know, these, you know, this is how life is. My mother, you know, I guess when she was like 50, 
for something like that. I had just had my son, my first child. And we were talking and, you know, she told me she had never gone and gotten a mammogram. And uh, I scolded her. I was like, Ma, you need to go get yourself a mammogram, man. You, you, you know, and I, I kind of like bullied her into it a little bit. And finally, you know, she acquiesced and she went. It turns out she had breast cancer. So she always said to me, you saved my life. You, if it wasn't for you, I would have, it would have gotten me. Um, because they caught it at a real, relatively good point. And um, they were able to tend to it. And, you know, she, you know, it wasn't easy for her for the rest of her life. I mean, she had issues with her lymph nodes being removed and stuff like that. But uh, when I saw this, like being women's issues, right? Like being a woman, like, you know, and, and fertility and stuff like that. It really, it really... Uh, made me, th and then I saw this, like continue to be healthy or to continue to be growing or whatever. I, I, you know, I thought to myself, this is maybe she's suggesting that I take tend to my health, you know, and pay. Now I've been paying a lot of attention to my health because everything's breaking down. <laughs> so I've, I've had more MRIs and CAT scans and x-rays and ultrasounds in the past three months than I probably collectively have had you know, um, for most of my adult life. So it's not like I'm ignoring my health, but I think, I think, you know, I'm being told to pay close attention to it. But I also see like an optimistic, like just be optimistic and enjoy your life and, uh, keep my eyes peeled, maybe keep my eyes peeled. So, but I do kind of, I'm kind of walking away with the feeling that this might've been more about my health and physical well-being. So I'm not sure, but we'll see. Uh, but I do keep, I do pay attention. I do pay attention. I just thought maybe it would be something she would tell me since, you know, she credits me with having saved her life once when she, you know, like 30 years ago or 40 years ago. So at any rate, I thought it was interesting to, you know, to, to, to re-look at these cards. I frequently do it after I do a reading on a topic and I want to see what I missed or, you know, Maybe sometimes I'm spot on, right? But if I see what I might have missed, then the next time I'll consider that as one of the options, you know, for describing what happened. So um, we're not perfect. You know, we're not like, there's no, there's no uh, de definitive, you know, absolute truth. But um, it's just a way to consider life. Let me flip. You know, tarot is really not a way of foretelling the future. It's a way of considering things or looking at things differently to imagine how they might turn out, given what you already know about the situation. So it's just a, it's just a means of looking at things differently. Or And then when you go back and you look at the spreads that you did, and now it has a different connotation, or you were, you were on the ball, you know, but there's also a little extra thing that you didn't know or something, you know, so it's a, it's a good learning tool. Anyway, until next time, friends, peace, stay well, be kind, do no harm, and pray for us. <laughs>